We are the only museum in the world that is devoted to the television medium, not simply programming. As Marshall McLuhan said, the medium is the message. Don't pay attention to the content. Take a look at the medium itself and how it creates an environment. That's what we are intent on doing. And please, get the first one. We have accumulated and collected carefully the finest set of North American receivers in the world. Out of this, approximately 60 sets are going to form a special show at the Royal Ontario Museum. When a curator that's as witty as Howard Collinson and an institution that's as venerable as the ROM and that typically does not engage in frivolous objects that are only 70 years old <laughs> and a corporation as powerful and as ubiquitous in the media business as Sony all agree that there is something here of public value then I believe even the most cynical person should stand up and pay attention. Many people take it for granted. And of course we knew the history of television. But when I saw it physically, I'm just in, you know, amazed at how far television has come. This is Walter Cronkite back at our anchor position for our CBS television coverage of these Olympic Games. More than what we say or do in a label, it will be the visitor's own emotional experience in the exhibition that demonstrates what television has done to our culture. That we can walk through a room of old televisions and they seem either amazing, if we've never seen anything like it, or completely familiar. <laughs> My earliest memory of watching television was watching The Friendly Giant, um, and it was interrupted because of the assassination of John F. Kennedy. Well, I've just finished saying that the rules governing watching television in the house was you don't watch television. Watching television tended to be sort of a family affair. We got together for particular programs like I Love Lucy. When we go back and look at how television developed, we see all kinds of parallels with what's happening with the information highway. And now, stand by for adventure. For example, in the early days, there was all kinds of unreliable technology, okay? The mechanical scanning discs that we have so well illustrated in the collection. These didn't work very well. They went to a certain point and then that was a dead end. Then along came electronic television. There were conglomerates struggling over patents. There are many, many lessons that we can learn. And the game, it happens to be the historical battle between flesh and steel between the brain of man and the product of man's brain. The technology has been driving the way um, our cultures uh, e evolved, and it's important for us to step back and take a, take a look at where we've been. It's a, it's a really wonderful opportunity to look at the way technology and culture interact, that uh, culture made television possible, and then television created the culture that came after it. Richard Gere makes existentialist angst fun as he plays a sleazoid without a cause in Breathless, also starring Valerie Kaprisky. Did we produce this movie here? <laughs> Next on City's Great Movies. Oh.